These teeth are made out of Sculpey, actually it's super Sculpey because it's this beige color. And they're individually sort of rolled between your fingers and you bake them. So now going to the jaws, we have several stages of development. First off, there's about 50 or so teeth here. So we have, this is a front, uh, these are like incisors and they're sort of uh, embedded into this here, this little piece of foam, and I have that's for the upper jaw because of gravity I haven't put that in yet because the teeth will fall out while the uh, liquid nails are drying. But if we go over here to the lower jaw we can see several stages of development. We've got here the same thing except it's in place and you can see how there's a little back there which sort of gives them something to stick to also. Then there's here and before you, uh, these are in the main side uh, gums. Now you have to mark your holes to make sure they're all, they're all even. And then you take the hot wire tool, which is here, shaped into uh, a shape like that. And you sort of put it in and sort of like make a little pocket um, for the teeth to sit in. Or a socket, rather. So you can see here, these sockets have been made, and um, that's where they go. And there's some teeth in place, and let's look at one other thing. Okay, here's the head trial fitted onto the body, just for overall scale. And the teeth are now in place, and I took a moment to make sure they're all reasonably well aligned. There's some chin detail that I have to do here, obviously. and. Uh, I've got one eye sort of just stuck in there so I can kind of get an impression for what it looks like. But overall, uh, it's not looking too bad. Some details have been added to the uh, main fins. It's this little panel here that uh, probably going to put some kind of pattern on it, but I'm not sure yet. That goes on that one and on that one. And pretty soon I'm going to have to start building the uh, framework for the um, super weapon that goes on there and it'll likely just slip into a couple of holes that I'll put here so I can take it on and off and it's not going to be too big of a production. It's just a simple quick disconnect. And then have an airline that runs probably down here and exits the body somewhere so that uh, the suit handler can um, actually uh, operate the rockets. Uh, the head's in place. Some of the suit will get skinned and you can see that here. I've done these three levels of the neck, trying to keep it all in even contour, and then the uh, hose channels that come off the off of here, off the headphones that go down there. So that's where we stand. Um, the jaw is not in its final position, and just uh, keep on trucking. This is a quick primer test spray. I just. Uh, basically did this to see what the head looks like all in one color and also the neck um, make sure the contour is all lined up because some of this isn't obvious until you actually spray paint it and the principal lines are largely looking good um, but we have uh, a few problems uh, problem number one is the marker that I pretty much use everywhere on this uh, is bleeding through the paint so that's not good um, hopefully successive coats of paint will take care of that, but it's certainly going to be more than one coat. Um, but that's okay because it would be anyhow. Um, uh, the paint is adhering in different ways. Here, on this piece, it's not adhering very well here, but it's adhering pretty well here. These issues don't really bother me because this is, um, this is that x-ray film, and this will take uh, the regular paint no problem. What would bother me, and is not a problem thus far, is this portion, which is the carved foam. Uh, you can see that takes the paint pretty well, but again, the x-ray film here is getting that weird sort of uh, organic pattern. Here the uh, covers for that mis-sculpted area have been filled in, and you can see the back. Now this is what it looks like before the back goes on. You can see it's hollow inside there. This is a panel here, and this is another panel here. They just fit on there, and this little block just goes in to give some sort of stability to this while I get ready to uh, 
uh, put the other cap on here. And I'll probably fill in this area with something else too. But uh, all in all, it wasn't too bad a fix. Here's a detail I wasn't sure if I was actually going to carry through with. But it's these nostril uh, projections. This is sort of an homage to the um, 74 Mecha Godzilla suit, and um, we'll see how this all looks when it's painted up. But uh, uh, it was a thing I decided to go with to make this an interesting, uh, not exact representation, but make it continuous with the whole line of Mecha Godzilla suits. So these are just aquarium riser tubing that's sort of jammed into the foam and all that ragged pink area will be uh, covered over with filler before spray painting. Well now we sh uh, go forward a few weeks in schedule. Uh, here's the head, it's all been sprayed. The teeth, all 50 of them, are pretty much in place and aligned. And we have those corrections built on and that's been completely boxed in so you really can't see that. Got the lines uh, like I don't know if they're like cooling vents or whatever that's uh, pretty much all defined in there and once again the tubes um, again all that space that you see in the blocks behind it will be sort of covered up with black fabric and the detail has yet to be put on here and the lines and certainly the red line that goes down here but by and large the head is pretty much done so the eyes have been installed and they do light up the head crown unscrews here and one on the opposite side as did the last mecha godzilla and this just allows for ease of access to turn the lights on and off and kind of saves you from having to rig up some internal wiring which is just more work so um, this is pretty heavy and you can see some screw holes here uh, right down there this will have to be screwed uh, with about four screws into the plate on top of the neck because the head is actually quite heavy and because of the teeth it definitely wants to uh, pitch forward and that's kind of an embarrassing thing to have happen during uh, a costume competition. <clears throat> Some more details have been added over here. This horizontal line that runs around the belt, these brackets and uh, Con this continues around the back. And this is just a piece of foam that's cut in a ribbon and it's uh, adhered with liquid nails. Um, another thing I did on the way of uh, testing out some ideas, these bolts uh, or bosses or whatever you want to call them, but they appear on the on the suit and I didn't know how to make them and have them all look right because you know there are some that are different sizes here. And I thought what's a nice little repeatable shape that I can go and buy off the counter. Um, you know here I got away with the Easter eggs. You see them on this on this knee and then over here in their original color, but what am I going to use for that? And then it struck me, little googly eyes. And you can see these eyes come in different sizes, and I was able to use them, and I just hope that as I'm walking along, people don't hear the googly eyes rattling. Okay, this is my daughter Elena, and just for size comparison, she comes up just about to his armpit. And uh, that's not a very uh, enticing place to be. But uh, anyway... Once I put the head on and it's fully in place, it's going to be quite tall, and I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to be something that you want rattling around loose up there. So again, four screws to hold it in place. Um, that's just one of those little details that you cannot forget on this sort of thing. Yuck. I also have included um, uh, in tonight's festivities <laughs> trimming the um, the tail plates up, and these are the side plates. So what it basically entails is taking a piece of x-ray film, bending it, adhering it with liquid nails on here, and then just letting it hang to dry overnight. The next day you come down, find your cardinal crease lines, just bend them in there, and then wrap it around, find where it bends underneath the tail, bend in another crease line there, and then you start cutting to basically follow the panel that's just ahead of it. And so while they're not absolutely perfect, you end up with a pretty regular look here that's going to work very well. Um, here is what they look like before that. These I just did tonight and again they're adhered here with liquid nails and they're going to be um, drying for about uh, 24 to 48 hours before I start cutting them up 
and uh, worrying about any of that. So anyway, that's where I am with that. Now one thing I didn't mention is that uh, the super weapon uh, frame has been put into place. And here it is. There are, um, ah, these are rough you. contours here. Boom, boom, boom. Excuse me, Bear. These are rough contours and you can see here too that this actually occupies the space that one of the fins sits on. So I've, I've cut a notch for that and it's going to sit up there when it's all done to give a nice line up the back for the spines. So. Um, the internal plumbing for the pneumatic operation is going to run on the top of here up here because you won't be able to see it and once it's painted it'll be just some more interesting detail um, a pneumatic tube will be running down inside the body now this is mounted you can see here with these two there's another pipe on the other side and that goes into a hole in the top of the um, shoulders now looking through the armhole, you can see the one on the opposite side coming down. So this gives some rigidity to the mount and yet allows it to flex some, but it's just plain old not going to fall off. So that's that, and this is just sort of a way for me to stand back again and get an idea for the um, actual size and contour of it. Are the angles right? And once it's on, is it going to line up with everything else? So the next thing to do is going to be future member of Screen Actors <laughs> Guild. <clears throat> the next thing is going to be working on the chest and the chest plate. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time, because of the way life is right now, to do any uh, opening and closing mechanisms for this. Now, this does separate cleanly here so that I can retrofit that in the future. And a lot of times these things end up being works in progress anyway, so at least that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Either way, it's going to look good, but it's not going to be uh, opening and closing and doing the things that I would like it to do this year. So, And here's a shot of the head now in place with the war paint applied. Um, these are some panel lines I drew on, and uh, I think it works fairly well. So that's the head in place. And now um, we'll look at the tail and how this has all been trimmed out all the way down to there now remains to do the other side in exactly the same fashion also these spikes have been um, rounded off and they'll need to have their detail which goes up here they're like little um, I don't know little details I don't know how to better describe it sort of like this that sort of spring up on the sides so they'll be there and I have a whole bunch more of those to do all the way down the tail so all the spinal I don't know spines or the lines or whatever the the things that are on the side here they're on all the way down and uh, that was a bit of work also, I've done the other side of the tail with these uh, x-ray panels. They're just not cut yet. So that's another thing under the, another piece or amount of water under the bridge. This may go directly to the editing room floor, but uh, these are the, um, some details that I've completed for the back of the uh, heels. And next I'm going to be doing uh, the calf uh, skin so it looks a little bit better than just that sort of structural support that it's there now. Okay, here's one complete um, mounted on the super weapon uh, frame. Here's here and this side you can see actually passes through and then here's the air tubing that's coming off and as yet it just dangles free because there's nothing to connect it to yet. You know, part of building something like this over a long period of time is being adaptable and flexible. Uh, I'm actually moving to Wisconsin and I've uh, put my house up for sale. So I had to insist that uh, certain areas of the house be off exhibit for potential buyers unless it's absolutely uh, required. And that means if they're putting a bid down and they really want to close on the house and inspect it. So this is one way to do it. In the meantime, 
I've had to do some uh, trimming of the area in here to make my house look a little larger. So I've still got the workshop and I've got what I'm actively working on right now which is the chest and this is going to be a bit of a crisis because of another issue of adaptation. This is my hot wire and as with any piece of equipment you will have equipment failures. Um, this device is really wonderful but I've had it since 98 and it's given me a lot of service. Unfortunately it chose the middle of this project to uh, uh, burn out the transformer which is this and apparently it's only available through the manufacturer so I'm going to have a little bit of an expense here I think. In the meantime the chest over here needs to have some major contours carved into it and I'm debating whether or not to do this with the hot wire or to use something like a hacksaw blade cut them real rough and then use this blue foam as foam paneling to uh, sort of create a built up yet sort of shell of a chest and um, I don't know we'll see it'll be interesting to see how I do with what I thought were going to be these carved curved contours in here and certainly the sides down here by the vents um, that was all going to be carved and on a related topic not not really um, tedium is forcing me to change tax here so basically uh, these are the rockets that will fire from the super weapon on the shoulders and here they are oops, in place on what I call firing manifolds and it's basically PVC tubing again and the goal is that air will be forced through here and launch these in this fashion unfortunately we have a misfire but anyway that's the uh, that's the idea one of these will be inside each of the uh, uh, barrels of the super weapon and you know you'd have six rockets firing ideally from each one but we're just gonna go with three because that's just what we're gonna go with and that's our on the lighter side uh, I've cleared out this room which used to house my collection and packed it up and uh, I've turned it into uh, sort of a, another area to store stuff that's largely complete. And believe it or not, this is largely complete. Uh, it's complete to the stage at which it could be painted. And after that, I'll have to put in all the fabric that bridges the gaps from the legs to the pelvis, that sort of thing. And there's a couple of things I have to carve yet. But again, I may try this paneling over sort of technique. and. Uh, I'll kind of show you how that goes. In the meantime, all the tail um, panels are cut and I've put on these uh, cable stringers that go along the side or cable funnels or whatever you want to call them. And so it starts here and runs all the way down the tape or down the tail. I have yet to finish the rest of the length, but they're not too bad. They're just pieces of x-ray foam folded over in a half a funnel. So more on that as things progress this is an important thing it's about perspective and the way you view things now here's the head and I'm very satisfied with this view what happens is sort of like the weirdness that happens to the King Goji suit when you come to another view and I think his head is too tall you kind of lose a little bit of the menace that you have here because his face looks a bit pinched from side to side I think one potential solution although I probably will not have time to do it is to stretch these side panels out a little bit more and would also be to move these these uh, nose panels out a little bit more so maybe as these suits tend to be uh, continually upgraded maybe in a later edition I'll do something minor like that it's not too bad um, in terms of time but it's more time consuming than the time that I have left okay this is just another uh, <clears throat> update um, you may notice I'm skipping some of the uh, finer points just because I think I've outlined them to death in some of the earlier segments so here I've got the head on and uh, it's um, just there for scale and uh, I don't know sort of a 
confidence booster at this point. Um, sort of as an homage to the original 74 Mecha Godzilla, I've included these globes here on either side of the neck. And um, as I said, I was planning on taking some liberties, and this is one of them. Now, I've uh, mounted the cores of the super weapon here. Uh, you can see the um, tubes that are going to hold the rockets and coming down here. Um, I had to do some realignment on the fins because they weren't lining up. They were kind of jutting out at about a 30 degree angle. That wasn't such a good deal. Um, these are the pneumatic tubes. They're going to come together via this little Y piece and I'm not sure exactly where this is going to route. Maybe down there or something. But uh, this base here is proving too thick to put it through. It's something I didn't think about at the time that I started. And, and uh, well, looky here. You can see the misalignment in here. And you know what? I'm just going to live with that. I don't think uh, I don't think that's something that's worth worrying about at this point. Um, another thing I have to do is trim this up and make this fit properly, like this side does. And uh, then, ultimately, the last thing to do after painting will be putting in the fabric spans here so that it really uh, looks right. Um, and once that's done, I'll be able to move on and get the uh, arms done. Um, and that's it for now. I'm not sure how obvious this is. This is the super weapon, and it's just a folded piece of foam like this. It sits on here in this fashion. Now this is the raw piece and I have to uh, trim it down quite a bit. Um, but this is, I'm going to make a duplicate of this so I'll have a spare and uh, start cutting and this will form that. Whoops, too close. Or at least the core of that. I want to emphasize that <clears throat> this material, you have to um, score it before you actually are able to fold it, otherwise it tends to crack. Um, but once you've done that, you're able to make these shapes and uh, fold them over to make long sort of rectangular tubes which will form the, uh, the super weapon uh, barrels. Here's one of the rough, uh, roughly completed tubes. Uh, in place and as you can see here's the frame it goes on over in this fashion and I had to notch out some areas so that it sits all the way back if I want to just like so and you can see it's notched in to fit there and also notched in to fit into that space. Yeah, very well focused shot. But anyway, um, you know, it's just a matter of custom fitting it. And then as you come around the front, you're looking straight down the barrel. And I don't have all six uh, missiles firing just because I don't have the time. And one more shot with the missiles in place. Um, I've had to anchor this with drywall screws along the top. And it's through the fact that this is not final, or the um, this piece is not final, that I'm able to kind of correct some of the straightness issues here. Um, this one will be matched up to this one, and it'll fire pretty much straight. Uh, one of the other issues that I'm noticing is that, in addition to my fin alignment problem, I have a little problem with the alignment of this back plate. It's, it sticks out more on this side, and I don't know if it's going to be noticeable from afar it probably won't and so I'm probably not too darn worried about it. Okay, same sitting, got uh, another Gamera movie and a half later, working our way into the Magic Serpent on a work night, but it's got to get done. So here's the main part, the top, the fin goes on there, and I've outlined some of the uh, other detail features that are going to go on there. It's, it's pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory about this at this point. Just surface details added on. Little bits of um, flat foam that are cut to shape and glued in place over it. Fairly simple stuff and um, I'm pretty glad I got all this done tonight. Uh, 
But that's all for now. Okay, some more details have been added. Some cooling fins which are made out of x-ray film. And these details up on top. And also on the side. So it gives it a little bit of detail there. And those have to be done yet. Um, that's going to re require my hot wire which the power unit burned out and I'm uh, awaiting a replacement so these are the kind of delays that you run into some minor fin detailing here and here are these details from the back and they have these little rocket nozzles here they're on the outside and on the inside and they're echoed on here by the purple uh, Easter egg half like I said, if the shape is right, use it. You can always put paint on it. Okay, here's one of the panels for the front of the super weapon. And I, you can see I've cut a notch into it so that it can recess somewhat into this, into this cavity here created. So <clears throat> here's one that's installed. From the back, I matched up the holes with the, um, the rocket tubes. And then these will all be filled with blank rockets uh, so they don't all fire. And then it's just put into the slot or into the uh, space and uh, drywall nailed into or screwed into place. And uh, there will be a piece covering this like a facing piece on the outside so you'll never see any of those drywall nails. And uh, why do I keep calling them nails? I'm tired. Okay. For uh, sake of simplicity, this is now suspended uh, here, and it's anchored to the shoulders at a nice, uh, fairly evenly balanced load point. Um, I'm just trying these out. These are screwed in place, and these will arch round back to the rockets that come off the shoulders. Uh, another noteworthy thing, the uh, quick disconnects are attached for here, and the rest of the chest is down here with the other connector of the quick disconnect. Um, it's a fairly simple arrangement. It just runs right through the inside and uh, pulls directly there. So it kind of holds that in place pretty securely. And what else have we got here? Some of the uh, uh, final parts have been added to the outside of the uh, super weapon and you can see those uh, missiles nestled in there that's just for checking size there'll be a uh, size of the hole make sure they come out easily there will actually be they will actually be a little larger and there'll be a facing plate that sits on the outside of that I've decided these have been added and some other details here these are clear right now but they'll be silver when they're painted um, little shields to go over these rockets and of course these details. Now in the suit these are actually inset and they're slots but uh, you know I this is so much easier and sometimes you have to make little compromises like that. I've also brought the tubing down because I can access the inside of it now the way it's mounted. I've brought them down here down the inside of the chest and they go to the little Y fitting. They're epoxied in place at the joints because sorry about that because um, I don't have anything else that would really work on plastic to glue these two different types of plastic together. One of the reasons for having it suspended is to accomplish something like this. I don't know if this shows up very well but this is me inside the suit and I'm shooting myself here so sometimes you have to try fittings to make sure that things all you know fit. So I'm checking to make sure my armpits clear the uh, undersides of the uh, uh, armholes on both sides and also I'll be interested to see where my shoulders stick out because that's going to affect how the arms are cut in terms of length. Okay this is the front chest plate again having carved away a lot of the really bulky stuff um, I've got it down to some really uh, usable contours but I decided I'm not going to carve the whole thing uh, I think I might have said that earlier um, what I've decided instead to get really nice panels and cuts is use um, actually this is a foam support and like a core and then these will be the facing and um, 
obviously there'll be panels here, 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 you know, filling in the gaps. But this is where you start so I can get the contours the way I want them and um, then I'll trim them all uh, towards the end when I put on the pieces that go in the front over here. This also allows me to have something nice and rigid for later when I go to install uh, the energy weapon which unfortunately is not going to be ready for this G-Fest. There's just too much going on and uh, it's uh, the 11th of June so in just about a month, maybe a little bit less, G-Fest will be practically over. So I don't have a lot of time and I have quite a bit of work to do yet. Now since the top panel here has to match up approximately with this, I had to install the chest plate and it's kind of allowed me to uh, do some uh, cutting and trimming already so that I can kind of see the overall contour uh, before I do it. And so far so good. I went ahead and installed the speakers right here. There's a one on the other side also and uh, they will be covered up by a facing plate also and uh, I don't know if I'm going to have uh, any kind of sound associated with this suit uh, but since the speakers are in I just may. But it will all come down to what I have time for. Here's a progress on the chest. Um, these will not open for this year's show, but I've got them set up such that they're not uh, glued on permanently, so I can build in hinges and then the under uh, underpinnings of them later. Um, but for now, um, Curious structure is rapidly approaching completion. Um, the arms are here. These are just two pieces of uh, foam that are cut and glued. It's kind of hard to shoot at this close a distance. So, have to mark them right and left because they are indeed different. Um, these are the bottoms of some bionicle canisters that had a nice size uh, and contour to them and the tape is just until the liquid nails dries. So this is the forearm and this happens to be the right side. Here's the right si or left side panel here and you can see it's bent sort of in a compound curve here and here. Um, it's not the smoothest compound curve but it will do and this is how it matches up. The front piece will go right on here. Um, this back portion, specifically this, which covers the strap, there'll be another piece that goes on there. It gives you a more rounded, uh, I'm sorry, a smoother sort of finish. And also, uh, I think it adds strength by creating a skin to cover up these multiple different components here. So. Okay, so this is the test shot that you have to have help for. Um, Everything seems to work out okay. I fit. I can move pretty well. So things are pretty good. And I can weight test it and it's pretty heavy. So okay, now I have to get out of this. Got As I said, they're different because the left side uh, has this weapon mounted on. And there's a lot of detail work to be done to make this a convincing um, uh, piece. But um, the right one has the drill. This one has this sort of ray gun, uh, twin pronged. I don't know. Thing reminds me of the Garuda. Actually, I think it was kind of a little bit of an homage to that. But uh, this time it's a wrist-mounted device. These are uh, face shield holders that uh, I've cut and uh, bonded together, and these are going to serve as detail on curious chest. These go like this, uh, much like the second version of Kiryu had. Sort of in the uh, whoops, look what I forgot. There's a rocket that goes here and has a nozzle hanging off the back. I'm going to have to come up with something for that. But uh, in the meantime, things are progressing pretty well. Um, these are two liter bottles, or actually one liter bottles. This is a uh, barbecue grill hose and uh, it's an applesauce cup and it's just sort of fixed on there by putting a hole through it and fastening it on with a cap. Well today is one of those days I actually feel like this could happen. <coughs> I've made these covers to go over that other uh, sort of soft foam stuff that I didn't like and sadly the missiles will not be firing this year just because of time restrictions but uh, these are the pieces that fit as end plates to simulate missile coverings 
and you can see there are two of them and uh, that's worked out well. Now these are that detail I was showing earlier that go on the chest plate and this is just a piece of that uh, black uh, hose harness that you can buy at any auto parts store and these uh, holding them in are floral pins at the stress points. There's one here, one here, and one here. Now before I can paint this or primer it or anything I have to cover up a lot of these holes or make, or not holes, but uh, screw heads and, or make them look a lot less obvious. But uh, things are rapidly approaching the uh, primer stage with this upper body. In fact, I would probably say they have hit that stage. Okay, here's another shot of the arm. And here's this other piece that goes on there. This tucks up here so that when you're in normal position, this is what it looks like. Um, also, there's this little piece. I actually haven't included an inside. Uh, there we go. Let me get a better shot of this. I have included an inside piece there. It would go wrap around. Um, it, this is just easier for getting in and out of the suit. And sometimes you have to make these compromises. For the most part, you won't see that. Nobody will notice it. Um, this is a detail I kind of improvised on. Um, I'm kind of cutting a few corners because of time constraints. Okay, 24 hours later I have a testament to the value of uh, experimentation and just trying something. Now, I gave up on the resin claws and I was going to make them out of Sculpey like I did the teeth. Because the first one smelled my house up so badly and was so messy and nasty. And yet, I just simply took it outside, added a few extra drops of hardener to make the resin harden up quicker, and I have four identical hard claws. What's the best background for this? Here, this is good. See a finger hole there? And they're perfect uh, copies of one another. One of the problems that you run into when you're doing one-off things like this, not um, from the same mold, is that they're all going to be a little bit different, so when you put them all together, they're going to be slightly different sizes and shapes, and you may notice it. Now, that's a pretty big detail. The teeth here are fairly small, and if you really look close, you can see the difference, but uh, I think there was minimal enough sculpture involved in those, and there was actually so little to do on them that I was able to come out with something that was pretty uniform looking. But uh, otherwise, you do end up with a problem when you're trying to duplicate many things that are supposed to look exactly alike. So, uh, I'm glad I did it. And sometimes it's just a matter of taking it outside where the smell doesn't bother you so much. Okay, <clears throat> I've had to resuspend him uh, so I can check things like the arms. Now these are the uh, roughly cut arms. They're lacking a lot of detail right now. And um, there's uh, the other one over there. And this is going to be the drill that goes on the end. So. Um, a lot of these things have to be custom fit, and again, this involved me climbing back inside the suit and uh, checking for measurements so I can make the cuts for where the elbow was. You can see the mark there, and doing the hinge. Now, these hinges are not as elegant as I would have liked. I had a whole different thing I imagined where I would have one cup fitting within another cup, and it formed kind of a rotating bearing there. I thought that would be kind of good, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't had time for that. So. We have resorted to, yep, duct tape. And here's a mock-up of the logo that's going to go on the shoulder right here. Uh, this is a tribute to the old Mechagodzilla logo. Uh, the same thing can be said for the lower torso, which uh, I've done a fair amount of shaping up on. Rather than cover these, I've sanded these down to a nicer shape on the thigh and done the same with the other side. Also, well, I'll have to clean that up. I've also finished off the back of these with this little panel. It'll have some little uh, little details on it and then uh, sort of rounds things off a little, uh, finishes things off a little bit more nicely. I did have one issue down here where 
I had some, uh, oh, where is it? This is tough to see through a viewfinder. Anyway, one of these little conical pieces sort of broke off. I think it is, oh, actually, it's right there. And uh, I was using double-sided tape. I'm going to have to fix that and check the others to make sure none of them are looking like they're going to do that. In the meantime, there's a covering on here. And uh, these will these tubes will eventually plug in. But what I'm going to have to do is take them all out. I just needed to make sure it was long enough. Take them out of all the little conical pieces, the guides, if you will, and then spray it, um, and then put it all back through again. And then after that, I will take uh, these parts and fasten them to the underside of the tail. But I have to be able to mask the black fabric that's here so it doesn't get silver paint on it. So it's really complex, and a lot of these painting operations are multiple steps. But as you can see, it is really starting to come along here. And as I can see, uh, it's getting close to being finished with primary construction. And that will be a big relief for me. Well, here we are. It's um, the day I've been waiting for. Primary construction is finished. And although everything that I want is not done um, in terms of features, it is largely ready to go and I'm going to paint it uh, after priming it and see what I got see how it looks see how I like it I may not add any more this year I probably won't actually but what I am going to do is treat this like a work in progress I'm sure yeah, for the next couple year or two I'll probably add the things that I really want to add like the opening chest plate with the uh, with the uh, Mazer cannons in it. I got some ideas for a light display that I can mount in there and have the rockets really firing and I may hook up the speaker so that he can still play the sound. That'll be one added feature but I'm kind of limited. Um, time has become a real problem here and uh, now with this being the Friday night uh, a week before G-Fest, I have to get this paint or primed and painted so that it can be ready to take to G-Fest. And I'm doing this amidst a move to uh, Wisconsin. So this is not going to return to Toledo. It's going to go straight to Wisconsin to a storage unit and await my arrival there. And it'll be in my home when I get there and uh, somewhere in the basement if I have a place to put this. Um, a really kind of strange thought occurred to me while I was doing this. Um, where am I going to put the 74? And I thought to myself, you know what? I wonder if anyone would like to buy the 74. So we'll see. Maybe I'll offer it for sale at G-Fest for some s amount of money that I have no idea because it really means a lot to me. Um, but anyway, this is uh, it. The primary construction's finished. I've left out a lot of details with some of this stuff because the construction techniques are really modifications on uh, stuff I've done before. However, this, which I'll try to demonstrate, does have a mechanism inside by which it can turn. But it doesn't turn very well because it's not, not centered properly right now. And uh, I'm not going to worry about that. So, uh, like I said, some things I've had to kind of let fall by the wayside. I also worked out a kind of a hinge joint. There's these auto uh, trim fasteners which basically mount in over here to little plates I mounted here. So I'm, when all the painting and priming is done, I'm going to drill a hole and that will hold it fast here and this is just liquid nailed to here and it's not going anywhere. But the problem I had was that this foam was too soft and they just pop right out and uh, that's no good. So basically this will give it a nice point to anchor and that's just like 130 or 230 seconds, 116, something like that. It's pretty thick polystyrene sheet and you can see it there and it's liquid nailed in place. So that being done, I'm going to resist the temptation to put it all together and stand there and say, oh my God, look at this thing. I tried to put it together in the basement for one time just to look at it when it's all together and uh, unpainted and I, it was too tall. I actually couldn't fit it in the basement. The issue that you run into is the, the super weapon doesn't allow you to uh, 
get the height you need over the uh, over the torso to drop the little peg back here into place and it starts hitting on the rafters and then when you hit it on the rafters you end up with damage to all these sorts of things and I didn't want that because they're just a pain in the rear so I thought it would be best to just leave it do the final assembly out here when it's all done and I'll get a good shot of it so on to the priming which I'm not going to show the priming I'm just going to go straight to the finished product because um, I don't think that's really going to be much of a value added feature so we'll see it when it's done okay I lied here's a gratuitous shot of the primered uh, piece and uh, looks a lot different now without the blue and the pink um, I had to mask off all this uh, x-ray film on the tail because that really is not necessary to prime and we're trying to conserve some of our materials so here we are um, we have some problems with this particular paint with some areas where it sort of runs um, you can see here and now well, that's that's not a run but you can see what it, it kind of does with the underlying ink it dissolves the ink that's on the foam that you use to draw and it sort of allows that to rise to the surface now I've tested this before it's not a problem when you do the final coat final coat doesn't lift it up and it covers it over and hides it pretty well so that's not really a problem uh, over here we have the head and the neck minus the super weapon and again we have uh, the ink lifting up right there you can see it pretty pronounced um, but again, not always a problem in the final analysis. You just have to kind of give it time. And that may actually add some character to it with some shading, etc. The um, <clears throat> hardest part to paint, obviously, was the fins because there's so many surfaces that have to be done, especially on the tail. And uh, it's nighttime, so light isn't perfect. And I'll probably have to do a second coat in the morning and then start with the primary under. Uh, the accent coat, the black in the afternoon um, or evening so that I can spray the final silver uh, day after tomorrow or very very late tomorrow so but you have to give this stuff time to dry but it's just so so different seeing this all in a monochrome and uh, I don't know I'm pretty happy Okay, the primer coat is dried and I've added some accent, uh, sort of a recessed paint scheme here. This will allow uh, the colors to sort of pop when I put the uh, actual final silver coat on. And this involves painting all the areas that are going, you're going to want to sort of recede uh, a darker color. And this can be black or it can be uh, very dark gray in this case. It just really depends. Um, I usually paint the things that are going to be on the underside uh, the darker color and that way that will uh, hide but since this is already gray and the highlights are going to be silver I don't have to paint everything so this is actually has a black undercoat or undertone whereas there's no undertone up here at all and that'll just remain gray but it'll be less glossy than the silver so it's a relative kind of thing and you can see you go through and do all the underside surfaces of things um, all throughout the, the piece. It's most pronounced here um, on the undersides of this, here, and when you get down here and here. It adds also much more of a three-dimensional effect to things. It really brings out the subtle curves. And you can see things don't look nearly as flat as they used to. And here, to bring out the panel lines that you want, and especially even here to make the face sort of pop in uh, a more dramatic way. Uh, and here it is. It's hard to get it all in even one frame. And I'm running out of tape. This is a lot of pain and a lot of work. And there it is. So I'm looking very much forward to G-Fest in one week. Until then I will see you there.
Well, everything's done now. I just wanted to uh, wrap things up by saying here we are at G-Fest. I haven't brought the suit out yet, but uh, the initial reactions have been really positive. I guess I need to be grateful to a lot of people, two of them being uh, my wife, who pretty much put up with the whole thing for the better part of two years, although she didn't know about the first year. And my friend Linnell here, Linnell Bridges of Shuat Video, he was largely responsible for bringing me back into the hobby and letting me know what was out there and kind of just sort of uh, keeping me in steady supply of uh, G videos. So, and last, I want to thank Foam Factory, uh, Hotwire Foam Factory in uh, California. Uh, they replaced my unit of my uh, Hotwire. They did it promptly. It helped me immensely and they did it at a great price. They have great uh, customer service and for this project it was just crucial so there are a lot of people other than me who had a, had a role in this and uh, all I can say is thank you to all of them and thank you to you for picking up this video. That's it.